Welcome back to AP Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video, we're looking at covalent bonding once again. If you're interested in ionic bonding, then you might want to look at a different video on my complete AP Chemistry course here on my YouTube channel. Today, we're looking at this concept of formal charge. Now, formal charge is something that you want to be able to calculate whenever you're drawing a Lewis electron dot diagram. A formal charge is basically a way that we assign a charge to each individual atom in a molecule. Now, in the best case scenario, in a neutral molecule, something that's not an ion, the most stable condition is for every atom in that molecule to have a formal charge of zero. Now, let me show you how to calculate formal charge. We're going to use some uh, molecules that we've drawn in some previous videos and look at formal charge. So we'll start with the silicon dioxide. So here's the, the, the molecule, the Lewis electron dot diagram we, we, we uh, drew last time. We'll start with the oxygen here on the left. Now, what you want to do is, first of all, start with how many valence electrons oxygen normally has according to the periodic table. So oxygen is in group 16, so it has 6. The next thing that you want to do is subtract from that the number of electrons this atom actually seems to have according to the structure we've just drawn. The way that you count that is every unpaired electron, or I'm sorry, every unshared electron counts as a 1, and every bond that's attached to that atom counts as a 1 as well. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, and then each bond is counts as 1, so that's going to be 5 and 6. So that means it's like I've got 6 electrons attached to that oxygen. So when I take the 6 that oxygen normally has, then subtract the 6 that, it's on, that, that, that are on there, I get 0. Okay, that's good. You'll want to have a formal charge of 0 on everything, which I guess is really means no formal charge. Let's try the other oxygen over here. It's done the same way. You know, oxygen has six, and it looks like I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I subtract six minus six, and it's zero. So I've got a zero there. That's good. Now let's try the silicon in the middle. Now silicon is in, is in group 14, so it has four valence electrons. And once again, like I said, each bond counts as one. So it's one, two, three, four. So I subtract the four and I get zero. So this is good. If everything is obeying the octet rule and everything has a formal charge of zero, then this is great. Okay, that's what you want. You want everything to have a charge, a formal charge of zero. That means that this is most likely the most stable uh, Lewis electron dot diagram for that molecule. That's probably how the molecule is going to exist. Now, in some cases, you won't have a zero on everything. And let me show you an example of that. Here's a molecule that we drew in the last video. And we talked about this having a resonance structure and things like that. Sulfur dioxide. So let's start with the formal charge here on this left side oxygen. So oxygen has six valence electrons normally. And how many does it have attached to it right now? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, but there's seven right there. You see that bond counts as one, so it really has seven. So six minus one, I'm sorry, six minus seven is a negative one. That molecule or that atom there has a formal charge of negative one. Now let's try the other oxygen over here. Oxygen's got six, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So subtract the six, and we get a zero. So that's good. Right, 6 minus 6 is 0. You want to have zeros. This is one case where uh, getting a zero is good. Now, sulfur, let's try the one in the middle there. Sulfur has 6. And how many does it have? Well, there's 1 for that bond, 2 for that other bond, 3, 4, and 5. So 6 minus 5 is actually a positive 1. So here we have a case where everything's obeying the octet rule, but actually this is not the best case scenario because the best case scenario, scenario would be to have zeros all the way across. 
And so we actually find that the structure that is usually going to exist is going to be this one, as it turns out. Uh, and I know that this does not actually obey the octet rule, or at least sulfur does not, 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 does not obey the octet rule, but it does give us a shape in which everything has a formal charge of zero. So this is actually a more stable shape. Let's try one last example. Um, so let's, let's try the example with nitrogen trifluoride. So for this one, we're going to determine the formal charge of every atom in NF3. So we'll start with the fluorine over here. And fluorines have seven. And how many electrons are attached to that? Well, there's one for that bond, then two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's a zero, and that's good. Zeros are good. We'll try the next fluorine here. And you know, fluorine normally has seven, and it actually has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that, once again, we got a zero. The other fluorine looks to be the same. We start with seven, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's good. We got a zero. Nitrogen is the last one. According to the periodic table, nitrogen should have five. So we'll put a five up there. And then we'll count how many it has. One, two. Each bond is a one, so that's three, four, five. So look at that. Every atom has a zero. We have zeros across the board for formal charge. So it obeys the octet rule, formal charge zero. This is a good structure. So as it turns out, formal charge is something that we can calculate pretty easily to help us maybe arrange things so that the molecules are uh, even more stable. Hope you learned something from this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If so, give me a thumbs up. Hope you've subscribed to my channel. If you haven't, then hit that subscribe button and join me again on my AP Chemistry course. I'm Jeremy Krug, where we can learn some more chemistry together.